Hey everybody, this is Ronan Dave coming at you. I'm here at Sinai Mariyama, as you can see right behind me here. This is a reconstruction of a prehistoric village that, that used to exist here about 6,000 years ago and was inhabited for about 1,500 years. The people that lived here are what we call today the Jomon people. Jomon is actually a name we modern people have given them. It's uh, named after the uh, type of pottery style that they did, where they used they would press rope into the uh, wet clay before they fired it. And that's where the name Jomon comes from. The Jomon people, or Jomon culture, goes back about ten, maybe twelve thousand years ago, and they lived in Japan. Uh, their culture uh, flourished for yeah about ten thousand years. It's believed uh, Sinai Mariyama started as kind of a temporary dwelling place for hunters and gatherers uh, between 5,000 and 6,000 years ago. But over time it became more of a semi-permanent settlement. I would see around here are typical Jomon pit dwelling homes. They estimated at one point that there were over 500 of these in Sinai Mariyama, so there was quite a big community here. This place is bigger than my apartment. Here we have a cross section of a refuse uh, mound pit where for this is like a thousand years worth of refuse um, pottery, figurines, uh, ornaments, things like that that they used to wear. Here I'm standing where the graves of children 
were placed. Uh, they were placed, uh, the remains of children were put into jars and buried uh, rather close to the village center, closer than the adult graves were. One of the theories as to why this was is perhaps the uh, people of Sinai Mariama thought that the spirits of the children would be reborn uh, with the newborns of the village. The structure behind me is more a piece of guesswork. They found these um, huge post hose that were like two meters in diameter and they believe it supported a structure that was at least 20 meters high and perhaps looked something like this. Again, we don't really know, but they think uh, like this type of structure would have been like some kind of watchtower. Not for defense, because pretty much they don't think there was any real warfare during Jomon times, but um, Sanai Mariyama uh, had a pretty extensive trade network in the northern Japan area. They were getting jade from Niigata, amber from Iwate, asphalt from Akita, and obsidian from Hokkaido. All of those places were hundreds of miles away, but they, were, uh, they used the sea to make it a lot easier for traveling. And so that might have been a lookout for the, the boats or dugouts that the uh, Sinai Mariama people uh, would have used. So here I am inside where the original post holes were discovered that they believe the uh, watchtower or whatever that structure might have been uh, was, uh, had been built. So each post hole is about two meters in diameter. So whatever was here, it was pretty large for prehistoric people. This structure I'm in was, they believed to be about 30 meters long and about 15 meters wide. And they think this place might have been used for like town meetings or communal activities or maybe just uh, group living, who knows. But what's interesting is the measurements they believe that they had here was 35 centimeters, which in Japanese, old Japan, that was known as shaku. So perhaps the Jomon were using that measurement that became a standard in later Japanese times. However, I, I don't think they had the, uh, the safety rails right there. Which is why the life expectancy of Jomon were shorter than ours. If only they had more handrails, they would avoid a lot of injuries. Apparently the people of Sinai Mariyama were so advanced that they even had water fountains back then. Ooh, this gets loose. Ah, Jomonicious.